today we will begin our discussion on the next topic for this course based on advanced structural design a full scale or real or practical civil engineering structures that are implemented in practice and the next topic of discussion focuses on liquid retaining structures that is civil engineering structures that are constructed and designed to retain or store liquids and the next few lectures we will be discussing the methodology for structural analysis and structural design of liquid retaining structures with special emphasis on the structural analysis of a reinforced concrete rectangular water tank that will be presented with detailed guidelines for structural analysis of reinforced concrete rectangular water tanks by means of a solved example that will be indicative of the guidelines for completing the solution to assignment number 4 of the present course CVL 441 that should be the final assignment in the present course however the solved example or the illustrative example will illustrate or present only the guidelines for completing the solution to assignment number 3 based on structural analysis and structural design of reinforced concrete rectangular water tanks well so we begin our discussion on the next topic that is based on structural analysis and design of liquid retaining structures as part of the component of the present course that concerns the structural design of concrete structures or specifically reinforced concrete structures in practice that are implemented in the field as real or practical reinforced concrete
structures. Liquid retaining structures that are one of the most commonly constructed civil engineering structures in the field are an example of specialized civil engineering structures that are constructed in practice because of the special function that the liquid retaining structures serve, that is to retain the liquid which may be chemically active in certain cases without any risk or hazard of leakage of the liquid from the liquid retaining structure designed and constructed in accordance with standard practice. While the discussion on the principles and methodology of structural analysis and structural design of liquid retaining structures In the ongoing presentation, will be discussed in the context of reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures that are, that is liquid retaining structures constructed with reinforced concrete as the primary construction material due to practical reasons the Fundamentals, concepts, and methodology of structural analysis and design of liquid retaining structures that will be discussed in this presentation as part of the next few lectures are equally applicable or relevant for any liquid retaining structure constructed with an alternative material, for example, steel, that is also uh, one of the popular construction materials for fabricating or constructing liquid retaining structures in the field. brief introduction to the topic of liquid retaining structures 
we will now proceed with our first lecture on the structural analysis and structural design of reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures with special emphasis on the structural design of reinforced concrete rectangular water tanks as the background theory for solving the questions in assignment number four of the present course CVL441 that should be the final assignment for the present course which will be based on the structural modeling structural analysis and structural design of reinforced concrete like rectangular water tanks one of the most popular or commonly implemented examples of liquid retaining structures The function of a liquid retaining structure, for example, water tanks, overhead storage tanks, underground reservoirs, and surface tanks, is to store A variety of liquids including water, oil, petrol and petroleum products or any other chemicals or liquids of any chemical nature. Therefore, one can visualize the specialized nature of the function that a general liquid retaining structure has to serve, that is to contain, store, and retain any liquid with diverse chemical nature ranging from water as in case of water tanks or overhead storage tanks or underground reservoirs to the most chemically active corrosive or abrasive liquids for example 
petrol or petroleum products, oil and chemicals of any chemical nature. and preventing the leakage of the stored or retained liquid by design. The structural analysis of a liquid retaining structure is generally performed based on the theory of plates as in case of rectangular water tanks or theory of shells as in case of circular cylindrical water tanks. It is worthwhile to mention here that water being chemically inert does not have an excessive corrosive or chemically active reaction with the construction material of the liquid retaining structure that is implemented to store or retain the liquid. However, in general, some chemicals and liquids, for example, the organic products such as petrol and petroleum products or inorganic chemicals may induce excessive corrosive or chemically reactive effects on the liquid retaining structure. However, the scope of the present course is limited to liquid retaining structures that are to be constructed and designed in practice to store and retain relatively chemically inert liquids such as water, oil, petrol and petroleum products. In any case, the structural analysis of the 
liquid retaining structure, depending on the type and form of the structure, for example, a cylindrical shell or a plate structure, generally follows the same methodology regardless of the chemical nature of the stored liquid. In a sense, the principles and methodology of structural analysis of a liquid retaining structure generally are based on the theory of plates in case of rectangular liquid retaining structures or theory of shells in case of cylindrical or spherical liquid retaining structures. Regardless of the chemical nature of the stored liquid. However, in case the stored liquid is excessively aggressive in its chemical nature, then special measures or special precautions need to be taken for the structural analysis and structural design of the liquid retaining structure that is intended to store liquids of excessively aggressive chemical nature. Barring such exceptional cases of excessively aggressive chemically aggressive fluids or liquids, in general, the fundamentals and methodology discussed in the present lecture for the structural analysis and structural design of liquid retaining structures should be applicable to majority of liquid retaining structures that are constructed or implemented in practice, for example, water tanks, overhead water tanks, underground water reservoirs, with that note, we will now proceed with our discussion on the structural analysis and structural design of liquid retaining structures starting with a brief overview on the choice of the construction material that is the selection of the 
preferred construction material that is to be used for constructing the liquid retaining structure. Well, reinforced concrete is the most preferred material for constructing liquid retaining structures and is even more popular than steel simply because concrete is aesthetically pleasing that is because of aesthetic reasons and is free from structural problems such as buckling and denting that are associated with steel and is also resistant to corrosion provided that sufficient cover is ensured for the steel reinforcement. Most importantly, reinforced concrete is more popular than steel that was once the common material for construction of reinforced for construction of liquid retaining structures as concrete is chemically passive in comparison to steel which corrodes easily and concrete does not react with the stored liquid. Therefore, with the evolution of liquid retaining structures and their design and construction practices, concrete very comfortably replaced steel as the most popular material for construction of liquid retaining structures due to its chemically passive nature in comparison to steel due to the fact that concrete does not react with most liquids as long as the steel reinforcement in the reinforced concrete liquid retaining structure is provided with sufficient cover to ensure that the steel reinforcement is never exposed to the stored liquid. The structural design, that is the next step in the design process of a liquid retaining structure, subsequent to the structural analysis of the liquid retaining structure under the action of the special loads exerted by the stored liquid, for example, water, oil, petrol, or petroleum products or 
any other chemical is performed typically using the working stress method or the allowable stress method of design that is based on the elastic design methodology to achieve an uncracked section by means of elastic analysis and design that ensures a crack-free structure to prevent the liquid, the leakage of the stored liquid. In other words, the elastic design method that is popularly known as the working stress method of structural design is generally implemented to perform the structural design of a liquid retaining structure for achieving an uncracked section in order to ensure a crack-free structure that prevents the leakage of the stored liquid for obvious reasons. Based on the specialized function of liquid retaining structures discussed in the previous slide and the related functional design requirements in the design process for liquid retaining structures that is to store contain and retain liquids of diverse chemical nature ranging from water uh, comparatively inert liquid in relative terms to the most aggressive or chemically reactive liquids as in case of such some chemicals. The functional design of the liquid retaining structure as part of the design process for liquid retaining structures is dictated by the consideration of preventing any leakage of the stored liquid from the liquid retaining structure that may pose a risk or hazard to the surroundings or the environment. However, as discussed earlier in the previous slide, the scope of the present discussion on structural design of liquid retaining structures in the present course is limited 
to only those types of liquid retaining structures that are constructed or implemented in practice to retain liquids of relatively less aggressive or chemically active nature, for example, water. Therefore, the design process for liquid retaining structures in the present series of lectures on structural analysis and design process of liquid retaining structures will be based on liquid retaining structures that are intended or constructed in the field to store relatively less chemically active liquids such as water as in case of rectangular water tanks or cylindrical water tanks or overhead storage tanks for water or underground water reservoirs or storage tanks for the organic petroleum products such as oil or petrol, diesel or any other petroleum product that is relatively less reactive in chemical nature. As mentioned earlier, regardless of the chemical nature of the stored liquid, barring the exceptional case of excessively aggressive chemicals the principles and methodology of structural analysis of liquid retaining structures are generally common or applicable to all such liquid retaining structures depending on the form and type of the liquid retaining structure. As a recap, recall that the principles and methodology of structural analysis of liquid retaining structures that are constructed in practice for storing the liquids of comparatively less chemical reactivity which are in the scope of the present course
are based on the theory of plates in case of liquid retaining structures that are constituted of plate elements, for example, rectangular tanks, or theory of shells in case of liquid retaining structures that are configured or constituted as shell structures, for example, cylindrical water tanks or cylindrical or spherical liquid retaining structures. In any case, the fundamentals, concepts and methodology underlying the structural design process of liquid retaining structures will be discussed and illustrated in the present course with reference to rectangular tanks as an illustrative example for discussing the principles and methodology of structural analysis and design of liquid retaining structures. Therefore, proceeding to the discussion on the structural design process for liquid retaining structures with reference to reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures by means of an illustrative example of a rectangular water tank, the structural design of reinforced concrete or RC liquid retaining structures, for example, a rectangular water tank is based on the premise or criteria that the maximum width of the crack does not exceed 0.1 mm in order to to achieve a crack free structure or an uncracked section in case of reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures for the purposes of satisfying the functional design requirement of preventing any leakage of the stored liquid from the liquid retaining structure. However, it should be noted that the limiting value that is specified for the crack width or the maximum crack width as 0.1 mm intended to contain the stored liquid without any leakage is only an imaginary or a hypothetical value. 
sense. Practically, there is no cracking for such an extremely small crack width that is specified as 0.1 mm to achieve the intended function of the liquid retaining structure that is prevent any leakage of the stored liquid from the structure. In order to achieve a crack free structure that is defined as a structure with a maximum permissible crack width of 0.1 mm in practice as the design criteria the structure is designed for extremely low permissible or allowable stresses since the numerical prediction of crack widths requires the application of complex theory based on research areas of fracture mechanics and crop, crack propagation, the structure design of liquid retaining structures in practice to ensure a crack free structure that is defined as a structure with a maximum crack width of 0.1 mm as the design criteria is based on permissible stresses or allowable stresses instead of the limiting strains or the limiting value of the crack widths. In other words, the design criteria that needs to be fulfilled to ensure a crack free structure that is maximum permissible crack width of 0.1 mm to prevent the leakage of the stored liquid. In practice, is achieved. by ensuring that the tensile stresses in the liquid retaining structure do not exceed the permissible or allowable tensile stresses corresponding to the limiting strains or the limiting values of the crack widths that are specified.
or adopt it as the design criteria. Therefore, as discussed, since the numerical prediction of crack widths or the related cracking strains requires the application of complex and advanced theory from the research areas of fracture mechanics and crack propagation, the structural design of reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures for practical purposes in the design industry is based on permissible or allowable stresses that are considered or deemed to correspond to the limiting strains or the limiting values of the crack widths specified by the functional design criteria of 0.1 mm for the maximum crack width. Structural design of reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures is therefore performed using the working stress method or the allowable stress method in the terminology of international codes of standard design practice. Also commonly recognized as the elastic design method for an uncracked section in case of reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures wherein the objective of the elastic design or the working stress design is to achieve a practically crack free structure with crack widths limited to an extremely low value of 0.1 mm as specified by the functional design criteria for liquid retaining structures indirectly by assuming or adopting an extremely low fracture strength or an extremely low cracking stress denoted as sigma CR that is generally adopted as 5% or 0 0.05 times FCK which is the characteristic compressive strength of the concrete in the reinforced concrete liquid retaining structure. As a result based on the working stress design method or the elastic design method for reinforced concrete structures, the permissible stresses or the allowable tensile stresses in actual tension or flexure corresponding to the extremely low 
value of 0.1 mm for the maximum crack width in the reinforced concrete sections of the reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures are specified as 0.27 FCK for the permissible or allowable tensile stresses in axial tension and 0.37 root FCK for the permissible or allowable tensile stresses in flexure considering the strain gradient that is generated in a reinforced concrete section due to flexure. Proceeding with our discussion on the structural design process for reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures we will now converge to the specific example of a reinforced concrete rectangular water tank that is also one of the most commonly encountered or implemented reinforced concrete liquid retaining structure constructed in practice and may be constructed as an underground water reservoir or a surface that is overground water storage tank. The specific example of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank that is considered for discussion in the present lecture will also serve as an illustrative example for discussing and illustrating the methodology of solution to the question of assignment number four based on the structural modeling analysis and design process of reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures wherein the specific case of a reinforced concrete rectangular water tank that is above the ground or above surface is presented The only difference in the design methodology in case the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank was underground as in case of an underground water reservoir. The lateral earth pressures need to be considered for the structural design of the walls of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank. In the case where 
the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank is an underground reservoir or an underground tank. And the critical loading condition for the particular case of an underground reinforced concrete rectangular water tank that needs to be accounted in addition to the other critical loading conditions is that the underground reservoir is empty and therefore the hydrostatic pressure does not contract or balance the lateral active earth pressure due to the surrounding soil in case of the underground reinforced concrete rectangular water tank. However, since the specific example that has been adopted for purposes of discussion and illustration of the structural design process for reinforced concrete rectangular water tanks is that of a overground or a surface reinforced concrete rectangular water tank This particular critical condition just mentioned does not apply to an overground or a surface storage tank. As an overground or a surface storage tank is not subjected to lateral earth pressures due to the surrounding earth fill or soil. Continuing our discussion on the structural design process, of reinforced concrete rectangular water tanks as the specific example of reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures for illustrating the principles and methodology of structural modeling analysis and design of reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures The reinforced concrete rectangular water tank is idealized as a plate structure constituted as an assembly of reinforced concrete or RC plates or in general plates of any other material such as steel that are constructed integrally and integrated
at their common joints by monolithic or integral connections at the common joints. The specific example of the re reinforced concrete liquid retaining structure that we will be discussing for the purposes of illustrating the structural modeling analysis and design process for liquid retaining structures will be that of a single cell reinforced concrete rectangular water tank that is to be constructed over ground or on the surface and therefore subjected to predominant primary hydrostatic loading due to the stored water and the structural analysis of the illustrative example of the single cell rectangular reinforced concrete water tank constructed on the surface or overground that is considered in the question of assignment number four is performed by idealizing the reinforced concrete walls of the single cell rectangular reinforced concrete surface water tank as rectangular plates or two-way reinforced concrete slabs each of which are idealized as two-way reinforced concrete slabs with their bottom edge fixed since the bottom edge is constructed monolithically with a thick base slab in general as in the field or in practice for such rectangular water tanks. The top edge as free since the top of the trunk typically has a light roof cover as in case of practical rectangular reinforced concrete water tanks that are constructed above ground in practice. And the vertical edges or the side edges which are vertical in alignment of the individual rectangular plates or the two-way reinforced concrete slabs that constitute the rectangular reinforced concrete water tank structure as idealized as fixed at the common joints with the adjoining walls or the adjoining 
plates of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank structure. The idealized boundary conditions that are assumed for the structural modeling of the reinforced concrete plate elements or the reinforced concrete two-way slabs representing the walls of the tank is shown in this figure. The variation of the bending moment in the reinforced concrete rectangular plates or the two-way reinforced concrete slabs with the idealized boundary conditions shown in the present figure in the current slide. Along a horizontal section that is along the width of the tank wall or the width of the two-way slab shown in the present figure is illustrated in the figure over leaf in the next slide. The figure presenting the variation of the bending moments presented in the next slide over leaf along the width or the horizontal cross section of any wall of the tank idealized as a rectangular plate or a two-way reinforced concrete slab with the idealized boundary conditions shown in this present figure in the current slide also displays the typical variation of the bending moment along the height of the wall of the tank that is along the vertical section of the tank wall for the idealized boundary conditions and the hydrostatic pressure acting on the plate element or the two-way reinforced concrete slab model representing the vertical wall of the tank as depicted in the present figure in the current slide. Continuing with our discussion on the structural modeling, analysis and design process for reinforced concrete rectangular water tanks that have been selected as the illustrative example for discussing the structural design process of reinforced concrete liquid retaining structures and are also 
the subject of assignment number four the structural analysis and design of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank structure is performed by idealizing the individual plate elements or the two-way reinforced concrete slabs that constitute the plate structure of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank with the idealized boundary conditions of the individual plate elements or the two-way RC slabs displayed in the figure presented in the previous slide. Based on the idealized boundary conditions of the individual plate elements or the two-way reinforced concrete slabs identified as the structural elements of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank is performed by calculating the maximum bending moments in the two orthogonal directions of the idealized plate elements or the two-way reinforced co concrete slab elements for the purposes of structural design of the reinforced concrete walls of the rectangular RC storage tank and the maximum moments that is the design bending moments in the two directions of the wall elements of the rectangular reinforced concrete rectangular water tank or storage tank calculated for the idealized boundary conditions that is with three edges fixed and one edge free as illustrated in the previous slide based on theory of plates are provided by the general analytical formulation derived on the basis of the theory of plates that provides the maximum bending moment Mij
where the subscript I denotes the direction of the bending moment while the subscript J denotes the location of the point in the rectangular idealized plate element or the idealized two-way RC slab that is of interest for calculating the maximum bending moment. And the maximum bending moment as provided by the theory of plates in the direction I, where I may be X or Y direction at the location J where J may assume the values of A, B, or C that are the locations of the point of interest for calculating the maximum bending moment. are given as a coefficient C i j times the unit weight of the stored liquid which is water in this case and therefore denoted as gamma subscript W where the subscript W denotes or signifies water times the cube of the height of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank. Typically, the unit weight of water is assumed to be 10 kilonewton per meter square, or rather. 10 kilonewton per meter cube that is the dimension for unit weight and for all practical purposes of structural design of the plate elements or the two-way RC slab elements of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank, the unit weight of the stored liquid, that is water, denoted as gamma subscript W, where subscript W denotes or signifies water, may be consumed, con considered as 
टेन किलो न्यूटन पर मीटर क्यूब देर फोर अप्लाइंग द जनरल फॉर्मुलेशन प्रोवाइडेड बाय द थ्योरी ऑफ प्लेट्स फॉर द मैक्सिमम बेंडिंग मोवमेंट इन एनी जनरल ऑर्थोनल डायरेक्शन आई where i may assume the value of x and y at a particular location j where j may assume the value of a b or c or k or l as depicted in the figure presented on the present slide in the maximum bending moments denoted as m that is capital m subscript ij may be calculated as the product of the coefficient cij wherein the subscript i denotes the direction of the bending moment while the subscript j denotes or signifies the location of the bending moment or the location of the point of interest where the bending moment is being calculated times the unit weight of the liquid that is stored in the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank that is water with the unit weight denoted as gamma subscript w times the cube of the height of the stored liquid above the base of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank thus resulting in the maximum bending moment about the or rather in the i direction at the j location in the dimensions of moment per unit length that is for example kilo newton meter per meter units in case of si units well the only question that remains to be answered is 
the value of the coefficient cij that is required for calculating the maximum bending moment in any or each direction i that is x or y direction <clears throat> at the specific location j of the idealized plate element of the two-way reinforced concrete RC slab and the coefficient Cij that is required for calculating the maximum bending moment in the idealized plate elements of the two-way reinforced concrete slab elements of the rectangular water tank structure are provided in this table presented in the current slide as calculated on the basis of plate theory. For a plate or slab element that is fixed on three of its edges and free on the fourth or the top edge of the vertical plate or the vertical slab element in a reinforced concrete rectangular water tank subjected to hydrostatic loading. Therefore, the maximum bending moments in any or each direction x or y at the desired location J in the reinforced concrete to a slab or plate of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank may be obtained using the analytical formulation presented in this slide. Re referring to the question in assignment number four based on the structural modeling analysis and design process for reinforced concrete rectangular water tanks the maximum actual tensile force due to hoop tension that is induced in the vertical 
ball elements or the vertical tight elements of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank can be computed very simply by considering the free body diagram of a horizontal section of the water tank. At the depth y over bar from the surface at which the hoop tension or the axial tensile force T due to the hoop tension is required. Considering the statical equilibrium of the free body of a horizontal section of the ball of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank as depicted in the free body diagram presented in the figure herein the hoop tension that is the axial tensile force T subscript hoop signifying that the axial tensile force T is due to the hoop tension in the walls of the rectangular reinforced concrete water tank should balance the outward component of the hydrostatic pressure at that depth, that is depth y over bar for which the horizontal section of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank is displayed. Equating the total axial tensile force in the two walls of the rectangular reinforced concrete water tank to the outward component of the hydrostatic pressure acting at the depth of interest that is y over bar from the surface one can obtain the hoop tension or the actual tensile force in the walls or slabs or plates of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank simply as gamma W times Y over bar, that is the hydrostatic pressure at the depth of interest or consideration divided by two 
since there are two walls for reinforced concrete two-way slabs that are resisting the hoop tension in the reinforced concrete liquid retaining structure. Dividing the hook tension or the actual tensile force due to hoop tension in either wall or plate element of the rectangular uh, reinforced concrete water tank by two Since the outward component of the hydrostatic pressure at the specific depth of interest denoted as Y over bar is balanced by the axial tensile force or the hoop tension denoted as T subscript hoop in two walls of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank. Therefore, the hoop tension or the <clears throat> actual tensile force T due to the hoop tension in any or either of the vertical walls or idealized plate elements or two-way reinforced concrete slabs can be calculated. Further, the hoop stress in any of the vertical walls of the reinforced concrete rectangular water tank based on the idealized forces and pressures on the individual plate elements or the two-way reinforced co concrete slab elements may be obtained by dividing the hoop tension that is denoted as capital T subscript hoop by the cross-sectional area of the respective ball element.